Hello, fellow traders, tis I, the Rumpled One, coming to you on Monday, November the 8th, the year's 2021. Let's talk trading indicators, T-R-O Squiggly. As always, these videos are for educational purposes only. Your results may differ from mine. Let me just remind you before we get into the uh, main topic here that you must always have your risk management in place. Never lose more than you're willing to lose on any one particular trade. Brain management, no fear, no regret. And on the money management side, remember, take profit before the market takes it back. So, and we'll just run through the charts quickly here. On the month, we're 137 pips off the low, 138 pips off the high. We're like right smack in the middle. All the gaps filled here on the weekly. You can see we took out the weekly pivot. On the daily, we've actually got into the opening range for the year. We're above that high. And we're 81 pips below the yearly low at the moment. We're into the inside bar that happened five weeks ago on the weekly and there's not too much inside bar action as I scan the uh, dashboard there pips though we've got six pairs over 100 pips most of them pound pairs and what's interesting the pound is outpacing the beast the pound yen that's a rare occurrence we took out the miss pivot from Friday so anybody playing that miss pivot, they were rewarded nicely. We're in the upper rat zone, actually getting ready to exit as I speak. Once again, we took out the weekly pivot and they said price at near the pivot short. Somehow that's, this has a, the pivot trading plan hasn't been uh, paying out. Once again, took out that previous day's missed pivot. We've got a previous week's missed pivot last week. And the monthly has been taken out already. In and out of the lower wick zone, in and out of the upper wick zone. In fact, I was actually... Um, looking at this trade earlier but i was busy doing some programming and i didn't actually pay attention to that opportunity so i missed the chance of uh taking that trade okay we've got the um higher low lower high in fact this is some of the stuff i've been working on um and i will be bringing that to you later the uh, walmart line simple price action trading i mean just basically taking the trade at the line pretty much paid off each and every hour if you look at these ranges really nice ranges And here with the rat and the wick zone, you can see, um, once again, we popped out of that wick zone. We're now in that upper rat zone. And we're in the upper ATR zone. You can see here the high of the day was 114% of the ATR away from the open. And... So to the indicator, TRO Squiggly. This is one of the ones you can uh, download from Cresslick in the mother load. And you can specify if uh, which MA type you want, what price you want to use, and the colors. So since I've got a white background, I should probably use dark green. 
and use dim gray here. And then you can see all the moving averages. So this way, you basically can look at a rainbow. Of moving averages instead of having all those moving averages across your chart here. And how would you use this? Well, usually, once they start turning, the 5 will turn, then the 10 and the 20 and so forth, then you start trading in that direction. So I imagine here, uh, somewhere around here, it started to call short. But see, now it called long. So let's see, we're one pip above the MA50, two pips above the MA100, seven above the 200, and 22 above the 400. So for those traders who are swing traders, trend traders, um, even though this is on M1, that's what they'd be looking at. But usually I think traders who use these higher moving averages definitely usually look at the daily. And you can see here pretty much everything is down. In fact, I saw somewhere, I think they had the 50 cross below the 200. I'm not quite sure, but they said there was a death cross on the uh, pound. I don't know if it was on the daily or on the weekly or what. Might have been on the hourly. I'm not sure. But this is just an, another indicator to help the traders out because even though I don't use squigglies um, the way most people do, um, the only thing I look at is um, if I'm in a trade, and I think I mentioned that in a video last week, that if the uh, price is away from the moving average by three or more pips and I'm scalping, I'm out of that trade. Because pretty much it's going to come back, and then I can always re-enter in the same direction if I want to. But, you know, this is a simple indicator. And no, it doesn't have alerts. Um, because if I'm sure if it had alerts, it would be dinging like crazy, especially on the lower time frames. But, you know, that's each to their own. I usually don't like putting alerts and in indicators. Because my philosophy is if you're trading, be in front of the screen and pay attention. Now, if you put an alert on, then you can look away and do something else. And, you know, it's each to their own. But to me, that, that means your head isn't totally in the game. You get that alert and you might make a rash decision. Oh, the alert says, you know, blah, blah, I should buy. Where if you were taking the time to sit there and pay attention to the price action, <clears throat> you might see a reason where, no, you shouldn't buy. You should just wait this one out. And in fact, I was working with a, an a old indicator, um, the TRO Dynamic Fibs SR, uh, something I think I wrote back in, well, I think I wrote it for MT4 back in 2008. But I think it was, I did it on TradeStation back in the even earlier 2000s. But I was noticed something when we were scalping um, the uh, pound dollar. Let's see if I can. And what I noticed was this. When you have the uh, fib set up between here and here, it actually places the dots. But... You can use, it's also the fit percents right here on the gauge. If when you take a trade right here off the lower high, if this candle, this candle and this candle, if they don't go, if this, if they don't push the range above um, 23 on the way up or 68 on the way down, if those first couple don't push it, 
it's almost going to snap back on you. And you can see here, uh, as price was moving up, it never even triggered the short until here. So that would have been a nice clean trade. But here's a perfect example. Um, in fact, I, uh, I got stuck in this trade um, earlier. What happened was I got the signal and came back down. When it pushed up, it didn't break to 23. And that should have been a sign for me to get out, but I didn't. And I had to average in and finally got out. In fact, somebody was asking about, you know, how do you uh, get out of trades? You know, how do you trade your way out? Well, that was the way I traded my way out. Um, you know, the lessons to be learned are one, make sure it crosses at 23. And if it doesn't, just get out. If you even have to scratch the trade, no, no harm, no foul. Number two, you know, wait for the push count to be um, a number that I need it to be, like at least three or four. And also wait for the uh, breakout number to be about 12 or more. So I violated a bunch of rules getting in the trade and not exiting soon enough. But then you can see here, price went up went up a little bit higher but didn't quite hit the 23 level and then came back down so if you exit it here you got a second entry second opportunity here and there it did close above that um 23 i think it might even hit the uh what's the next one 37 38 um but then you see it put in a two ball started to reverse just take the money off the table and then you see here it gave you another one and this one really ran so, you know, that's just doing that intraday scalping type trading. And the one other thing that um, I've noticed, and we got the DSR scalper, I have to put up the new HLH scalper that I wrote, um, is that I notice a lot of times when I get stuck in these trades, trading off the M1, if I, all I have to do is double check and make sure M5 agrees because I think it was right here, M5 agreed, and there was a nice uh, short trade right out of here. But it would definitely uh, keep me out of some trouble because what happened here was <laughs> I got in, M5 was green, but then it turned red. But once again, it failed to hit that 23 number right here. And so just so you know, with this one, set at 34 it's calculating the distance between this this red diamond and the blue diamond so right there and right there so it, i'm curious maybe somebody can uh, tell me how many of the traders that watch my video how many traders are trading in and out like Walmart and I, the scalpers, how many traders are more swing traders, position traders, or they're in for a long term? They might want to hold for, you know, hours or days. Where to me, holding for five minutes just seems like an eternity. But I'd be curious to know. So as we see what's happening here, it went up, there's profit to be made, and then you can see here it came right back down. So you might be tempted, oh, it's back at this level, let's get in. Well, what do you have here? <laughs> M5 is red. How about you just hold off a bit and see what happens? And I know Walmart likes to make sure you have a close inside the box before he enters the trade. Now, one other thing I have noticed, especially in the beginning of this trade, is price likes to come back or come back, dip in, and then take off. So, fellow traders, I hope you enjoyed the TRO squiggly and the breakdown of the HLLH. Um, let me know what indicators you want me to talk about. And in the meantime, just remember, 
when you're sitting at your trading platform it's not what you trade it's how you trade it so go out there and drain the banks this is the rumpled one over and out